I know you're probably tired of factoring, but we have more factoring to do. We want to look at a general approach that works for any polynomial in this lesson. So if I wanted to create a generic series of steps, I would factor out any common net factor possible. If it's a binomial, I would check for those key formulas we just talked about. If it's a trinomial, I would check to see if it's a perfect trinomial. If it has more than three terms, I would try factor by grouping. Then once I've tried all of those, I'm going to check to see if any terms could be factored further. So that's like the example in the previous lecture where your answer was something like y plus 2 times y squared minus um, 25. y squared minus 25 can still be factored because it's the difference of squares. And the lab will frustrate you because it's going to tell you you did not simplify fully and it's a matter of you didn't catch one of those special formulas. Then you can check your work. So we're just going to explore some of these things and review in here. So if I look at the first one in part A, um, I can't factor a variable out of that. I can only factor a number. So that's fully factored. If I look at B, that's a trinomial. So if it's a trinomial, I wanna first try and factor out any common factors, which would be X here and two. Then I'm gonna look at the trinomial and say, are there any factors of negative two? that add to be five? And the answer to that is gonna be no. So that's as far as I can factor it. In part C, they both have that P minus Q in common. So you can pull that to the front and then you can do 12M minus seven N in the back. Factoring binomials have to be special formulas when you don't have a variable in both terms. So if I have a variable in both terms, this is going to be the method that I look at. Those are all of them in a one-stop shop. So if I look at A, that's going to be the sum and difference of squares. If I look at B, that's prime. There would have to be a subtraction symbol between them, or they would have to be cubes. In C, I have the difference of cubes. So I'm just going to apply the difference of cubes formula, and then I'm going to simplify it out. So you really just have to be able to recognize those binomials. To factor a trinomial, there are some perfect square trinomials that I can look at. Um, this one would fit the perfect square trinomial because the first and the last term are perfect squares. And the middle term is two times the square root of the first term times the square root of the second term. Again, if you factor this by grouping, you're going to get the same answer. So you don't have to memorize this one. Same thing in B, I would look at two integers whose product is 40 because this doesn't fit the perfect square. None of those terms are perfect squares. I'm going to expand that negative 13 out to those factors. I'm going to group around those factors. I'm going to factor a T out and a negative 1. Now I have two things in common with 8 T minus 5. I pull that to the front and then I have T minus 1. Here's another example of factoring a trinomial. I want to factor a three out because I always want it to be as simple as possible. This is not perfect squares, so I'm going to do two times 21. I want the factors that are going to add to give me negative one. Once I do that, I'm going to split the negative one. I'm going to group them together. So I can pull that two X minus seven to the front and I'm left with X plus three. Here I have four terms, so right from Jump Street, I have to do factor by grouping. So I'm going to group my terms. I'm going to factor out what I can. And then I have a P squared minus 2Q squared in common. I'm going to bring that to the front. Here I have four terms again. I have to factor by grouping. What I'm going to do, though, is 9X squared plus 24X plus 16 is a trinomial. And I noticed that it's a perfect square trinomial, so I can do it in this way. So when you have that random other variable hanging out in four terms, you just want to group away from it. So you want to group those first three terms together and leave that random variable hanging out because a Y does not fit in with an X trinomial. Now I have the difference of two squares, so I have to expand it out. And then I have to combine any like terms if possible there. Four terms, I'm going to have to factor by grouping. Um, here, I have two terms with B, so I'm going to put them into a staggered situation so that when I factor them out, I have a common factor of 4A plus B, and I'm going to have the sum of two cubes and the difference of two squares. 
which is where that comes from.